very good defense. Wade from behind takes it away. Chalmers, pull, James! Whoa! Portland has three timeouts left. The Lakers have two. Bryant, to shot! Be a 50 by. He took off just a little inside that free throw line. Among the most important collective sports on an international scale is basketball. Basketball has many and very important names, so it is difficult to establish a list with the best athletes in this discipline in history, not only because the tastes of each one influence a lot, but also because of the diversity of players, their performances, and their successes in developing this very influential sport. Number 10. Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan is one of the greatest basketball players in NBA history. The San Antonio Spurs player has won five championship rings, has been the regular season most valuable player twice, and has been selected to the NBA All-Star Game 15 times. He holds the distinction of being the only player in NBA history to be selected to the All-NBA and All-Defensive teams in each of his first 13 seasons. The athletic player who began playing basketball only during his freshman year of high school played a total of 19 years for the NBA San Antonio Spurs, making his successful career one of the longest in professional basketball history. Incredibly, Tim Duncan had not touched the basketball until he was 14 years old. The San Antonio Spurs legend didn't even contemplate a career as a professional basketball player until tragedy set his destiny on track. Timothy Duncan was born on April 25, 1976 into a family where sports was a tradition. We're not talking about basketball, but swimming. Tim was born in the Virgin Islands of St. Croix, an archipelago of 68 islands, and his mother, Delizia, was a professional swimmer who qualified in the 100-200 meters for the 1988 Olympics. As all parents do with their children, Tim's mother also guided her four children towards sports and in this case towards swimming. Supported by his parents, he trained in the 50, 100 and 400 meters with dreams of making the US team for the 1992 Olympics. But those dreams were left behind when a hurricane hit the islands, leaving him with no place to train. His desire for swimming diminished until the death of his mother, for which he ended up losing his love for swimming, deciding then to start playing basketball. As time went by, it was time to go to high school, and Tim opted for George Dunstan's Episcopal School. Duncan became a regular member of his high school team and led his teammates to 12 wins and zero losses. In the summer he grew to 6 feet 5 inches and once again repeated the great success of his freshman year. His name also began to circulate in the United States so he was invited to participate in a camp in Ohio with other high school students from the United States. He began his basketball career in college, his first team was Wake Forest, where he became one of the best players of his generation, receiving in 1997 the John Wooden Award for the best male player in the NCAA. In addition, he won twice the ACC Player of the Year Award with the Demon Deacons and three times the NAPC. In 1997, being considered the best college player, Duncan was signed to play for the NBA Spurs. There, teaming up with David Robinson, he led San Antonio to fight for the ring and demonstrated his skills, making his team one of the strongest in the competition. In that first season, Tim was voted Rookie of the Year. The rest is history. With hard work, in that way, he became the leader of his team and idol of the American fan. In San Antonio Spurs, Tim Duncan wore the number 21, while in the U.S. national basketball team he could be seen with the number 13 on his back. The Spurs number 21 is among the 10 best-selling jerseys of the last 10 years at the NBA store on New York's Fifth Avenue. Along with the United States basketball team, Tim Duncan won the bronze medal at the 2004 Olympic Games in Athens. San Antonio won 71% of its NBA regular season games in the Duncan era, the best record in league history over a 19-year span of Tim's career, 1997-2016. During his 19 years in the NBA, Duncan was the symbol of consistency and leadership. He was in the top 10 in average points, rebounds, and assists in 11 consecutive seasons. And, for the first 14 years of his career, Duncan was always in the playoffs. 
Duncan was also one of the first to have an advanced statistic. The player efficiency rating, PER, was created in 2003 to measure individual player performance. During his first 10 years in the NBA, Duncan was among the top 5 in PER. Duncan is considered one of the best power forwards in NBA history with his versatility and consistent records. He regularly ranks among the top scorers, rebounders, and shot blockers in the league, and is considered one of the best interior defenders in the league. On July 11, 2016, the San Antonio Spurs announced the retirement of the legendary power forward, and on December 18th of that same year, they paid tribute to him by retiring his jersey with the number 21. That title of best four of the history must be filled with reasons, five NBA championship titles, three MVP of the finals, two MVP of the season, 15 appearances in the All-Star game, with one MVP, 10 appearances in the best five of the season, eight in the best defensive five and rookie of the year in 1998. A cataract of arguments that drowns any possibility that another player in his position discusses his supremacy. Tim earned a lot of money, but he could have earned more in advertising and contracts by going to other franchises more attractive from a marketing point of view or with more salary space to tempt him. He chose to put it aside, he could have afforded himself that privilege. What he accomplished was more important to an entire community, he put San Antonio, Texas, on the world map, and in fact it can be argued that his arrival to the franchise in 1997, with the quick success in 1999 prevented any thought of moving the Spurs to another city at some point. Duncan didn't build a franchise, but he did define it. Durant, knocked away oh, by oh. Tim Duncan, as Durant was locked and loaded. Parker, Leonard for three. Number 9. Shaquille O'Neal. Okay, he's up, coming back to the other end. There is no doubt that Shaquille O'Neal is one of the greatest players in history and one of the most dominant players the world has ever seen. Shaquille O'Neal, known as Shaq, was an NBA center and considered one of the best players of all time. He had a great ability to grab offensive rebounds that ended with a dunk and dominated at the hoops. He started playing basketball at a very young age and decided to play the center position because he weighed 147 kilos and had a 1-inch foot, which made him strong in that position. Many said that he could not succeed in the NBA, that his size and corpulence instead of helping him would affect him, that it would reduce his mobility on the backboard and cause a lot of clumsiness when dribbling the ball. That and many other things. But it turns out that that young man who made his debut in the 1992-1993 season with the Orlando Magic, having won the draft with this franchise and under the tutelage of the great Magic Johnson, ended up becoming for many experts as the most dominant center of this sport. Shaquille O'Neal, always remembered for pulverizing his daring defenders, leaving them aside in individual duels and then fearing that he would break the basket with the backboard, something he did on more than one occasion. Logically, talking about achievements and records is something very trite and it is not the intention, it is only about recognizing someone who was an idol of his generation, and who, of his 19 NBA seasons, and 14 of them remained above the average of 10 points and 10 rebounds per game. Shaq played 19 seasons in the NBA, was selected in the number one position of the draft by the Orlando Magic in 1992, won the rookie title in 1993 with a magnificent campaign of 23 points per game, 13 rebounds, and 4 assists. With the Florida team, he reached the Eastern Conference Finals in 1996, losing to Michael Jordan's Chicago Bulls. In the 96-97 season he would arrive to the Lakers for $122 million and would begin a magnificent story with Kobe Bryant. At that time he changed his jersey from 32 to 34 since the first number was retired by the team in honor of Magic Johnson. Kobe, happy for the arrival of the center, commented, this was the player the Lakers needed, they haven't had a center like this since Kareem, with Shaq the Angelinos will win several titles. The forward was right in his statements, since the Brand O'Neill duo would win the famous three-peat, three championships from 2000 to 2002, living a wonderful era that will be remembered forever in California. In 2004 they reached the finals, but could not beat the bad boys of Detroit Pistons. His extraordinary time with the Lakers was impressively boosted by coach Phil Jackson. Winning streak on the line. Four seconds. Shaquille fade away. 
and he not only dedicated himself to shine in basketball, from very early on he shined on movie screens, in addition to recording several music videos and then beginning his stage as a writer, publishing books such as Shack Attack in 1994. Among his shortcomings, there will always be his tragic free throw shooting percentage, curiously the second worst in history, surpassed by Wilt Chamberlain, and to be even more curious, Karl Malone is the third in this list, despite being the third best scorer in history. Shaq was in other teams such as the Phoenix Suns and Cleveland Cavaliers along with LeBron James and Boston Celtics where he retired in 2011. In his career, he was MVP of the season in 2000, four-time NBA champion, 15 All-Star Game selections, one of the best rebounders and shot blockers in history and Olympic and World Games champion with the U.S. national team. His size and strength was reflected in his game, dominating the sport and very difficult for a player with these characteristics to replace him. He is currently a sports commentator and the impact he has had on the sport has made him a significant figure on and off the court. His facet as an entrepreneur after retiring from basketball is one of the best known. The former NBA player earned a doctorate in education, a master's degree in business and has owned 105 guys restaurants, 150 car washes, 40 gyms, a movie theater and runs his own fast food chain. Shaq, it is estimated, has a fortune of more than 400 million, but he made a decision that goes hand in hand with the rules that govern his life and with which he seeks to educate his six children to make their own way and not count on his money. My kids, my kids are older now and they're kind of upset with me. Not really upset, but they, they don't understand because I tell them all the time, we ain't rich, I'm rich. <laughs> no, you got to... You got to have bachelor's or master's, and then if you want me to invest in one of your companies, you're going to have to present it, boom, 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 bring it to me. I'll let you know. I'm not giving you nothing. One rule, education. I don't care if you play basketball. I don't care about none of that. Listen, I got six kids. I would like a doctor, somebody to own a hedge fund, a pharmacist, a lawyer, someone that owns multiple businesses, someone to take over my business. But I tell them, I said, we, we're not, I'm not just going to. Hand it to you. You gotta earn it. So. It's clear that Shaquille O'Neal's life hasn't slowed down. Although he is now away from the courts and immersed in a business life that has boosted his fortune, we can take the story of the self-proclaimed most dominant player in NBA history as an inspiring testament to how one can succeed and maintain prosperity even after retirement. A great on and off the court. O'Neal puts it on the floor. Hey! <laughs> oh boy. Number eight, Larry Bird. Probably with a little off balance. Bird with the steal behind the back to Nate Archibald. Back to Bird. All right, fantastic. That's the highlight film, John. In the 1980s, there was a player so dominant in the NBA that he revolutionized the game. His name is Larry Bird, and he is currently the greatest legend in the history of the Boston Celtics, with whom he became a great champion of basketball in the United States, and earned the distinction of being recognized as the best forward who ever played the sport of basketball, besides being one of the protagonists of the greatest rivalry in the history of the NBA. The Great White Hope, he won three NBA leagues with the Boston Celtics out of the 13 seasons he played and was also part of the dream team that won the gold medal at the Barcelona 92 Olympic Games. With an ungainly and anti-athletic body, he ended up becoming one of the best athletes in history. Specialized in three-point shooting and an extraordinary rebounder and passer, he has been considered the best white player in professional basketball. Larry Bird began playing basketball in 1968 when he entered Spring Valley High School and his precocious skills soon made him stand out first in junior basketball and then in college basketball. Although he would not be able to play in the NBA until a year later for reasons of studies and age, in 1978 he was signed by the Boston Celtics. His contract as a professional materialized on June 8, 1979, for $3.25 million for five seasons. In his first season in the NBA he won the title of best rookie player and was included in the championship's ideal quintet and selected for the All-Star Game. In his second year as a professional he won his first NBA ring with the Celtics, with Bill Fitch as coach. 
in successive years, and with K.C. Jones on the bench, the Celtics became NBA champions in the 1983-84 and 1985-86 seasons, and runner-up in 1984-85 and 1986-87. Larry Bird was named NBA Most Valuable Player on three occasions, 1984, 1985, and 1986. In 1982, he was named All-Star Player of the Year and Best Free Throw Shooter in 1984, 1986, and 1987. Third leading scorer in the 87-88 league with an average of 29.9 points per game, he won the first three editions of the NBA three-point contest, 1986, 1987, and 1988. During his time as a professional basketball player, an event that we cannot omit when talking about Bird was one of the greatest rivalries with the Lakers player, Magic Johnson, which is known as the rivalry that saved the NBA from bankruptcy. Both players entered the NBA in 1979, and although Magic was selected as the first pick in the draft by the Lakers and Bird was selected by the Celtics, their simultaneous arrival created the basis for a historic rivalry. Magic revitalized the Lakers, leading them to the title in his first year, while Bird transformed the Celtics, returning them to the league's elite. The true magnitude of the rivalry was revealed in the NBA Finals, where Bird and Magic met three times in the 1980s, 1984, 1985, and 1987. These series were not just championship battles, but duels between two styles of play and two iconic personalities. The intensity of the confrontations boosted television viewership and elevated the status of basketball to unprecedented levels. The rivalry transcended the boundaries of the court and became a cultural phenomenon. The NBA experienced a boom in popularity, thanks in part to the dynamic between Bird and Magic. The showdown in the 1980 NBA Finals was the spark that ignited mass interest in basketball, attracting a new generation of fans. Although in the end fate favored Magic more than Bird, as time went by it was Larry who achieved legendary status in the NBA and was considered the greatest small forward to ever play the game. In October 1988, Bird signed a two-year contract with his team. Just one month later, on November 19, 1988, Bird underwent surgery on both Achilles' heels, which kept him out of competition for almost the entire league. Since then, injuries caused him numerous problems, impairing his performance. Sometimes, when he seemed to recover his best form, a relapse forced him to leave the courts again. Nevertheless, he continued to break records. In December 1990, he became the 15th player in NBA history to surpass 20,000 points. His last great triumph was the gold medal at the 1992 Barcelona Olympic Games. Along with other legendary names such as Magic Johnson and Michael Jordan, he was part of the U.S. Dream Team that swept all its competitors to reach the final, where they beat the Croatian team 117-85. to On August 18, 1992, he announced his definitive retirement from professional basketball. In the press conference he gave to the media, he explained that he had been forced to make this decision because of his back pain, which prevented him from performing at his best in the competition. With his departure, one of the NBA's most brilliant periods came to an end. Along with other stars of the Dream Team, Larry Bird had contributed greatly to the popularization of American professional basketball. In his new phase as coach, which began in 1997 at the helm of the Indiana Pacers, he also reaped well-deserved success. In 1998, he was named Coach of the Year, and in the 1999-2000 season the Pacers were runners-up in the NBA. Introverted and reserved off the court, in his first NBA season he was Rookie of the Year ahead of Magic Johnson, included in the championship quintet and selected for the All-Star Game. Larry Bird, the redneck from French Lick, has broken all records. With an average of 30 points per game, he has been NBA MVP three times, All-Star MVP, top free throw shooter and three-time winner of the NBA three-point shooting contest. Simply put, the best small forward in history. Play stolen by Bird at half court. Off to McHale, back to Bird. Larry stops, jumper, good! 40 points on the night for Larry Bird. Number 7. Will Chamberlain. Records are meant to be broken. However, Will Chamberlain, who left the NBA in 1973, still holds more than 70 records in this league, being the person with the most unbroken records. In many of the categories, his record is followed by others of his own. However, if he is known for anything, it is for being the only player to have scored 100 points in a single game, in which he broke five other records. 
Wilt is considered by many experts as the most dominant player of all time and one of the best players in history. A world-class athlete, Wilt Chamberlain had a height of 2.16 meters and was known for his endurance and speed. He was the first to average 30 points and 20 rebounds per game, a record that still stands today. In his career, he also won league MVP four times, a record that has only been matched by basketball player Michael Jordan. He was a leader inside the league and an innovator outside of it. His time in the sport continues to be a source of inspiration for many athletes today. Wilt Chamberlain decided to give basketball a try because it was the sport of choice in Philadelphia, the city where he was born. After touring a large number of schools, he finally played for Overbrook High School and later shocked the world by wanting to play at the University of Kansas. Unable to enter the NBA directly prior to graduation, the Big Dipper decided to join the Harlem Globetrotters, although he was eventually selected by the Philadelphia Warriors in the 1960 draft. He became the first player to be named NBA Rookie of the Year and Most Valuable Player. Since his arrival in the league, he maintained a fierce rivalry with Bill Russell's Boston Celtics, who won 11 championship rings in 13 seasons. By 1963, the Warriors moved to San Francisco, and a year later Wilt was traded to the Philadelphia 76ers. In his third season with the team, he won his NBA title. If good old Wilt is remembered for anything, it is for scoring more than 100 points in a game. The milestone took place on March 2, 1962, on the court of the Philadelphia Warriors, when at that time they had not yet moved to California, giving rise to one of the most famous photos in the history of the sport and achieving a mark that 61 years later is still not close to being beaten. Among his most notable accomplishments were four NBA MVPs, seven-time league leading scorer, 11-time leading rebounder, 13 All-Star game selections, and seven NBA All-Best team selections. Wilt was, in particular, an offensive machine with a very complete arsenal. Height, athletic ability, physical power, voracious mentality, technique, villain personality and some distinct moves such as the finger roll and the fadeaway. From 1965 to 1968, he was part of the Philadelphia 76ers and finished his career with the Los Angeles Lakers. During his 14 years in the NBA, he scored 31,419 points, an average of 30.1 points per game. His incredible scoring records earned him the distinction of being considered, by many experts, one of the best offensive players in the history of basketball. Some say that the NBA organization even established new regulations that, in practice, meant a restriction of his scoring abilities so that his mere presence would not excessively unbalance the level of play. Few athletes have managed to reach the heights that Chamberlain demonstrated throughout his basketball career. His record stood until 1984, when it was broken by the also legendary Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Retired, he always had an extroverted and controversial personality that put him in the center of the scene. He opened a nightclub in New York, recorded an album, starred in a movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger, wrote three books, participated in several advertisements and admitted to being such a womanizer that, in his first book, A View From Above, 1991, he claimed to have had sex with 20,000 women. Because Wilt was also that, a person who, at times, sounded arrogant and at others, analytical and brilliant. A full life that had everything and ended at the young age of 63, due to a sudden heart attack. A physical talent without equal, with a great mentality, a lot of ambition and a bulletproof self-confidence, the same that allows him to be in the discussion for being the best basketball player in history. Number 6. Bill Russell. The greatest defender in history. Before Bill Russell brought his wonderful defensive and shot blocking skills to basketball, the game focused primarily on offense. Russell reversed the trend, initiating a defensive mindset that remains a focal part of championship basketball. Considered the greatest defensive center in basketball history, the agile Russell was a dominant collegian. Playing under Hall of Fame coach Phil Wolpert and along with fellow Hall of Famer K.C. Jones, Russell helped the University of San Francisco become one of the most thriving and exciting teams in college basketball. Russell then turned the Boston Celtics into a powerful machine that overwhelmed opponents both defensively and defensively. During Russell's career, Boston won 11 NBA championships, including eight consecutive titles from 1959 to 1966. Russell experienced firsthand the head-to-head -head battles with Wilt Chamberlain, which were legendary. 
The former Celtic standout was the player with the most NBA titles, winning 11 with the Boston team, although he won two of them as a coach. In 1956, he led the US team to win the gold medal at the Melbourne Olympic Games. That same year, he was drafted by the St. Louis Hawks, but the Celtics traded for Ed McCauley to write one of the winningest stories in American sports. Russell and the Celtics had absolute dominance in the NBA, as in the 1950s and 1960s they managed to be in 12 finals, where they won 11 titles. Russell not only had the size, 6 feet 8 inches, 98 pounds with a 7 feet 3 inches wingspan, to dominate the paint like a king, but also the speed to stick to guards on the perimeter. He averaged a whopping 22.5 rebounds per game, placing him second on the all-time rebounding list, behind only longtime rival Will Chamberlain. Stoppers weren't recognized as an official statistic until 1973 to 74, so he probably would have been near or at the top of that list as well. Sending a ball into the stands looks great in pictures, but Russell was never concerned with aesthetics. His goal was to get his hands on the ball to end the defensive possession. Many of Russell's blocks served as outlet passes. He would often pass the ball to himself or pass it to one of his teammates. His spatial awareness, help positioning and timing were impeccable. But Russell didn't need to block every shot. The word hadn't entered the NBA lexicon at the time, but he was the definition of a rim protector, a big man who got into his opponent's head simply by his presence. Russell played 13 seasons in the NBA and won 11 titles with the Boston Celtics. He was a five-time MVP, a 12-time All-Star, and his defensive dominance left a mark that still lingers today. Before coming to the NBA, he won the NCAA twice and an Olympic gold with the United States. He was ahead of his time. In addition, there is a fact surrounding his figure that helps to understand that, when it comes to winning, Bill Russell has been the most powerful dominating factor in history. Considering his career, Russell played 21 games in which, in case of defeat, his team was eliminated from the competition in question. Of those 21 career games, he lost none. 21-0 record when his team was on the wire. Chilling stat, for a player forgotten by many, and best ever debates, but one that should never be missed. Shortly after his passing in 2022, the NBA retired Russell's number 6 jersey league-wide, making him the only player in NBA history to receive such an honor. Number 5. Magic Johnson Magic Johnson. That's rebounding. To Cooper. Now look at the speed. He saw Robertson ready to get the timing to go up to the block. He saw the new... To talk about NBA basketball is to talk about the great Magic Johnson. Irvin Johnson is the name of perhaps one of the greatest players that world basketball has ever seen. Born in Lansing, Michigan, he was the genius and figure of one of the most memorable periods of the Los Angeles Lakers. But Johnson's story goes beyond sports records. His impact on basketball and the African American community continues to be relevant today. In 1991, when he was diagnosed with HIV, there were very few known cases of athletes who had contracted it and none who had continued to compete at the highest level. Magic, who was already considered one of the best basketball players in history, had five championship rings and countless individual achievements, decided not to give up, and went on in search of the trophy he was missing. A year later he got it, when he became Olympic champion in Barcelona. He was a giant of 2.06 meters and 115 kilos, but with the agility and movements of someone much shorter and lighter. Magic Johnson was able to improvise in the air and pull a rabbit out of the hat on every play, to make magic, as his nickname says. Always as point guard for the Los Angeles Lakers, in 12 years he was NBA champion five times, three times most valuable player of the season and three times in the finals. He was also the only rookie to be MVP of a finals in 1980. He also had legendary duels with Larry Bird, first in college basketball, and then in the four finals between the Lakers and the Celtics between 1984 and 1987. He was just that, a magician. Magic Johnson was characterized for being a luxury passer. Only he was capable of delivering the ball through the least thought spaces, less credible for the defenders. He ran the court perfectly, he was a gifted athlete. An exciting player, undoubtedly one of the best in NBA history. He played his whole life in the Los Angeles Lakers. 
from the time he was selected in the 1979 draft until the 1995-1996 season, with a brief break that lasted four years. He was the first player to average a triple-double and the only player to have scored, passed, and stolen in the same game. But what really made Magic Johnson so important to the NBA was his attitude and energy. He was always willing to help his teammates and motivate them in tough times. His leadership style brought great enthusiasm to the basketball world and helped create a healthy competitive environment. He was a player who played with passion and had fun with the game. During the 1980s, the NBA became an entertainment in itself thanks to a group of dynamic teams, including the Los Angeles Lakers. The Showtime Lakers, as they were known, were known for their ability to move the ball up and down the court, their tight defense, and their speed. Johnson led this spectacular team, winning titles in 1980, 1982, 1985, 1987, and 1988. In 1991, Johnson announced that he would retire from basketball after being diagnosed as a carrier of the HIV virus. The news shocked the entire sports world, although Johnson remained an example of strength and resilience regarding his medical condition. After his retirement from basketball, Johnson founded Magic Johnson Enterprises, a company focused on developing businesses in underserved communities. He has also been a philanthropist, establishing the Magic Johnson Foundation, an organization that focuses on improving the quality of life in African American communities. He returned, however, in 1994, when he served as coach of the Los Angeles Lakers, only to return to play several games as a player the following season before retiring for good. He led the Lakers to become the team with the most points scored three times, 1987, 1989, and 1990, and the team with the most rebounds twice, 1982 and 1983. His spectacular playmaking, NOLA passing, and quickness contributed to the Los Angeles Lakers' style of play being considered showtime. Magic Johnson left a lasting legacy as a sports figure and influential individual. His basketball skills, competitive spirit, and on-court leadership made him a benchmark for players of all generations. His versatile and spectacular style of play inspired many young people to pursue their basketball dreams. Likewise, his courage in facing the challenge of living with HIV and his fight against the disease demonstrated his resilience and determination, making him an example to follow both on and off the court. That's a pretty good combination, Bird and Irving. You think so? <laughs> Kareem comes back with two. And Magic Johnson has set a new NBA All-Star game record with 15 assists, breaking the mark set by the great... Number four, Kobe Bryant. Lakers will get a chance to take the lead, and look who has the ball. <laughs> With half a minute to play, Bryant for the lead! Yes! Kobe Bryant gives the Lakers the lead! <laughs> if the Los Angeles Lakers made Showtime a trademark, few players have been as aesthetic and at the same time as decisive as Kobe Bryant. The shooting guard was, without a doubt, one of the best basketball players in history. Gifted with an overwhelming plasticity, Kobe was the point man when the team had to play for the last shot. As a good scorer, he sometimes took too many shots, but he could always be counted on. He didn't mince words, on or off the court, with statements that left no one indifferent. 18-time All-Star, 15 NBA All-Tournament selections, third on the all-time NBA scoring list, scorer of 81 points in a single game, 2007-2008 MVP, two Finals MVP awards, five championship rings in his pocket and one of the best point guards in the history of the American League. Kobe Bryant is everything, or almost everything, in basketball history. Therefore, it is not surprising that he deserves, not only for tribute, but for what he did on the courts, a high place in a top of the best, after leaving the world in a helicopter accident in 2020 at the age of 41. And the fact is that Black Mamba left an indelible hold not only in the sports scene, but in the hearts of all basketball lovers, who miss his charismatic presence. When he came to the NBA at the age of 18, without having gone to college, Kobe faced the challenge of emulating the legend Michael Jordan, who reigned supreme in basketball. However, the young star was undaunted and worked tirelessly to perfect his game and make his mark on the league's history. His unquestionable work ethic was reflected in his ability to score 81 points in a single NBA game, second only to Wilt Chamberlain's legendary record of 100 points. 
from his partnership with Shaquille O'Neal, with whom he won three consecutive titles, to his successful duo with Spaniard Pau Gasol, Kobe demonstrated a unique ability to synchronize with his teammates and lead his team to the top. Throughout his 20 seasons in the NBA, the Black Mamba evolved his style of play to adapt to different stages of his career and face new challenges. His competitiveness and thirst for success were unquenchable. Despite his achievements, Kobe always sought to surpass himself and his rivals. His nine All-NBA Defensive Quintet nominations attest to his commitment on both sides of the court. In addition, his four All-Star Game MVP awards and two NBA Finals MVP titles highlight his ability to shine at the highest moments. Other unique accomplishments stand out in his resume. He was the youngest player in history to reach 10,000 points at 24 years and 193 days. He has surpassed the 50-point barrier in nine games. He was the first player in 41 years to score 45 points in four consecutive games in the 2005-2006 season. At 1.98 meters tall, he knew how to stand out on the court. Even in the flashiest franchise in all of sports, the Los Angeles Lakers, where he played his entire career. Bryant, known by the nickname Showboat since his rookie days, was always the center of attention and his play captivated the basketball world. Although his departure on January 26, 2020 left a void in the NBA and the sports world, his legacy lives on the court, and every player who strives to excel and in every person who finds basketball a source of inspiration. Kobe Bryant was more than a basketball player, he was an icon, a leader, and a legend. His legacy will live on in sports history and continue to inspire future generations to embrace the Mamba mentality, compete with passion, and achieve greatness in any walk of life. Kobe, likewise, was even more than all of that. For an entire generation he was the first great idol, an emotional touchstone. He was also the face of a sport worldwide. Even more, he was the man who transcended his sport and took it to another level. How many people in the world would have bought and imitated his movements? Millions, as he did with his idol, Michael Jordan. A legend who, since the fateful accident that took his life, will be even greater, a myth for history. A myth to mourn, but also to remember forever. Number 3. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar For Kareem to get the ball. Everybody's waving their arms. It's in the Kareem. Kareem swing left, right hand, 12 footer, good! <laughs> the pictures tell. There are athletes who pass through sports and remain in the collective memory. For their overwhelming talent, for everything they won, for what they generated in the fans. And there are others who go even further, who are not satisfied with that, with climbing to the Olympus of the gods and belonging to the firmament of the brightest stars. They are those who have an inner need to go beyond, to speak, for those who want to listen and for those who don't, to fight, to help and even to raise awareness. In short, to leave a mark, a social legacy that serves for a more just society. This is the case of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, one of the three most important basketball players in history, the second most federated sport in the world. From what he did on the court, his place is clear. Six times NBA champion, five with the Lakers and one with the Bucks, eight MVP awards, six in the regular season and two in the finals, 19 times selected for the All-Star, 11 times in the defensive quintet and another 10 times in the ideal quintet. A different pivot who retired as the top scorer with 38,387 points, stopper, defensive rebounder and the one who played the most games and minutes in history. He is also considered the best in college history, both at high school and college level, a player so dominant that he forced to change the rules of the sport since the NBA banned the dunk, who invented one of the most innovative and difficult to stop moves in history, the hooks guy, and who, if that were not enough, had the luxury of playing until he was 42 years old among the best in the world. Hard to be more than that. Well, Kareem did. In his two decades in the NBA, Kareem scored 38,387 points in his 1,560 games played with the Bucks and Lakers. He scored 15,837 shots from the field, a single three-pointer, and 6,712 free throws. 
He fought racism from the age of 21 when he refused to go to an Olympic game. Later, he embraced Islam, changed his name, and never shut up in the face of injustice. He was the league's best player in 1971 and 1985, was champion six times, with Milwaukee in 1971 and Los Angeles in 1980, 1982, 1985, 1987, and 1988. He played for 20 seasons in Milwaukee and Los Angeles Lakers, being in this team where he would reach his maximum triumphal dimension, together with point guard Irvin Magic Johnson and small forward James Worthy. Debutant of the year in the league in 1970, he won three college titles with the legendary UCLA team in 1967, 1968, and 1969 before starting his professional career. His college career left no doubt that he would be the number one pick in the draft. The Milwaukee Bucks were fortunate enough to select him in June 1969. And the Bucks' growth since Elsindor's arrival was exponential. In his first year, the team doubled its wins and was second in the Eastern Conference. Elsindor was Rookie of the Year after averaging 28.8 points and 14.5 rebounds. In his second season, 1970-1971, and also thanks to the arrival of point guard Oscar Robertson to the Bucks, he won his first title. Olsindor was MVP of the regular season and the finals. He also finished as the leading scorer, 31.7 points per game. In the following four seasons, Milwaukee played another Final Four, 1974, and the Conference Finals in 1972. The 1974-1975 season would be very important in the future of his career. Robertson had retired and the block broke down. Jabbar maintained his numbers, but he was very lonely, and for the first time, the Bucks finished the season with more losses than wins. The lack of a defined direction in the franchise and the fact that he was not comfortable, his peculiar character and his religious beliefs, which no one in his entourage shared, did not help either, motivated the center to ask for a transfer in the summer of 1975. Kareem was sent to the Los Angeles Lakers, who, since Chamberlain's retirement, lacked a guaranteed center. His arrival was a breath of fresh air for the Californians. As a team, his first years were not entirely sweet because the team always fell in the first rounds of the playoffs. But his statistics, influence, and leadership were always there. Kareem never averaged less than 24 points, 13 rebounds, and 3 blocks. Everything changed in 1979. That year, Magic Johnson arrived to the Angelina franchise. The spectacular point guard was the perfect complement to Jabbar. He allowed defenses not to focus only on him. During the 10 seasons in which the two were teammates, the Lakers won five rings and in three other years played in the NBA Finals. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar retired in 1989 at the age of 42 as a true idol. And he didn't leave as a bit player. Thanks to his perseverance, capacity for sacrifice, mental preparation and intelligence, he always performed at a good level. Obviously, the years took their toll on him, but he managed to make his decline very slow. In fact, he was important to the team until the very last moment. For example, only in his last two seasons, when he was over 40, did his scoring and playing time averages fall below 15 points and 30 minutes respectively. Two characteristics defined Ad Buljabar on a basketball court. One was his peculiar glasses, he started wearing them in Milwaukee because of an eye injury and never took them off, even though he didn't need them. The other was his particular shot, patented by him, the skyhook. Kareem's statistics and records said a lot about his balance as a professional, but above all his way of doing things and making a difference on the court for two decades. His hard work and dedication helped him reach the pinnacle of professional sports, but it was his ability and skills that dazzled, enamored, and convinced millions of fans that what they saw in Abdul-Jabbar was not something ordinary, but something exceptional and unique, but a talent of another dimension. Number 2. LeBron James Boy, really trying to find two bots. That's good play by AD. LeBron, trained down the track. Look out! Blocking foul. That's a three-point attempt. Look out below! <laughs> so LeBron going downhill with a hit. LeBron James is one of the best players in NBA history, a status that has earned him the nickname King James. He did not need to go through the college league to make the leap to the professional ranks, where he has a spectacular track record, including two Olympic gold medals and four NBA rings. 
Born on December 30, 1984 in Akron, Ohio, great things were expected of LeBron James from an early age. In 1999, he was recruited by St. Vincent St. Mary High School to join their basketball team, where in total, he scored 2,657 points, 892 rebounds, and 523 assists during his four years there. When he was just 17 years old, the U.S. sports media began calling him the Chosen One. LeBron James was the first player selected in the 2003 NBA draft by the Cleveland Cavaliers and proved to be a valuable addition to a franchise that was not going through its best run of results. He played for the Cavaliers from 2003 to 2010. At the end of his first regular season, he was named NBA Rookie of the Year, the first Cavalier to receive this award and the youngest player in league history. He finished the year averaging 20.9 points, 5.5 rebounds, and 5.9 assists per game. Although he is primarily an offensive player, King James is very complete and capable of excelling at all positions. One of LeBron's great strengths has been his ability to reinvent himself according to his team's needs. The versions of Cleveland in his first stage and Miami are very different from what he showed with the Cavaliers of the Ring, or even now in Los Angeles. And in all of them, he has been a reference scorer, without dropping below 25 since his rookie year. History, the press and the fans still do not value LeBron James for what he is. One of the greatest players ever, not just including his legendary status as the greatest scorer of all time. He is the essence of the total player, the paradigm of what basketball is all about. No matter who you think, the numbers don't lie, on par with the greatest, even if for some he is already the greatest legend of the sport. Over the years, the legend of LeBron James has been growing. The American-born player has been competing in the best way in the best league in the world for 20 seasons. These outstanding performances have led him to be considered one of the most outstanding athletes in history. Another of the most valuable awards in his career is being the first player in NBA history to score 30 points or more in six consecutive games, averaging 60% or more from the field. In addition, he was the first player in NBA history to score 2,000 points, 500 rebounds, and 500 assists in seven seasons. Stats that have boosted his legend in this sport. As if these individual and overall recognitions were not enough, it should be mentioned that this athlete has also been fundamental to the history of his country. LeBron James has won a bronze medal at the 2004 Olympics, a bronze medal at the 2007 FIBA World Cup, and two gold medals at the 2008 and 2012 Olympics. His impressive statistics make him worthy of his place in this ranking, regardless of one's taste for his style of play. What is certain is that LeBron James' mythical career cannot be forgotten, since at 39 years of age he is still considered one of the greatest exponents of the sport. Everything seems to indicate that he will continue to be the talk of the town until his retirement from the courts. Number 1. Michael Jordan Malone is doubled. They swat at it and steal it. Here comes Chicago. 17 seconds. 17 seconds from game 7 or from championship number 6. Jordan. Open. Chicago with the lead. Timeout, Utah. American basketball player considered the best in the history of the sport. Certainly, since the invention of basketball by an American gym teacher in the late 19th century until the 1980s, there has never been a prodigy comparable to this legendary basketball player. 
At 1.98 meters tall, Michael Jordan was a tenacious defender, an excellent scorer, and a quick and imaginative passer. But even more striking was his extraordinary leaping ability and the acrobatic maneuvers he used to evade the opposing defense and get to the basket. He seemed to be able to remain suspended in the air for a few moments, a legendary ability that earned him the nickname Air Jordan. Although born in the New York borough of Brooklyn, Michael Jordan's childhood was spent in Wilmington, North Carolina, where he had moved with his family. A basketball fan from an early age, he began to shine when he was still a teenager. At the age of 13, his father had a basketball court built in the backyard of his house, where he became the admiration of the neighborhood and the neighbors who gathered on weekend afternoons to play basketball and barbecue. Like so many other NBA players, Michael Jordan took his first steps in the college league. In 1981, he joined the University of North Carolina team, and two years later he was already voted best player of the college season, a distinction he received again in 1984. In the summer of 1984, when Michael Jordan was already known in the United States with the nickname He Can Do It All, he was part of one of the best American basketball teams that, under the direction of the rigid Bobby Knight, won the gold medal at the 1984 Olympic Games in Los Angeles after beating the Spanish team in the final. The same year of his triumph at the Los Angeles Olympics, he began his professional basketball career. He was selected in the NBA draft by the Chicago Bulls, the team he would remain with for almost his entire career and with which he won six NBA championships. The leading scorer in 10 seasons, he averaged an NBA record 32 points per game and was voted MVP in 1988, 1991, 1992, 1996, and 1998. Michael Jordan attended his second Olympic Games in Barcelona 92, the first games in which, due to a change in the rules, professionals were allowed to participate. The United States team, which would be called the Dream Team, included the best players of the moment, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Hakeem Olajuwon, or Charles Barkley, in addition to Michael Jordan. The result was predictable, the Dream Team won the gold medal with overwhelming superiority and became one of the main attractions of the games. In October 1993, after the murder of his father, he left the competition to devote himself to baseball, his father's favorite sport, but he returned to the NBA in March 1995 and once again became the star of the Chicago Bulls. When he returned, the NBA would not allow him to wear the number 23, which had been retired from the Chicago Bulls. But soon after, the superstitious Jordan requested it as a special favor and the tournament officials allowed him to play with the legendary number. His second stint was as triumphant as his first. Michael Jordan won three new NBA championships for his team, 1996, 1997, and 1998, and his image eventually took over the courts. In 1997, he starred in the film Space Jam, a mixture of animation and real images, with Bugs Bunny as his co-star, which became a huge box office hit and announced the creation of a sportswear company bearing his name. If on the court he stood out for his spectacularity, elegance and intelligence, off the court he was always admired for his simplicity and honesty. In early 1999, he announced his retirement from active sports, but he still returned to the top competition with the Washington Wizards, and continued to add records to his impressive statistics between October 2001 and April 2003, the date of his definitive retirement. In his last game in Chicago, the crowd at the United Center gave him such a standing ovation that Jordan himself had to interrupt it, giving an impromptu speech. One of the main arguments that positioned Michael Jordan as the best basketball player in history is his effectiveness in the finals. The legendary 23 of the Chicago Bulls reached six finals and won them all. As if that were not enough, he was chosen as the most valuable player, MVP, in all of them. In his impeccable resume, he also has five regular season MVPs, second only to Abdul-Jabbar's six. In addition, he is the top winner of titles with the highest average score per game in a season, with 10 trophies. He also holds the record for the highest scoring average in the finals, with 41 in 1993. The arguments are not only limited to statistics. Jordan revolutionized basketball and patented plays with his stamp. Without going any further, he popularized the indefensible fadeaway, his most iconic move that consists of pivoting, jumping backwards to get away from the opponent and shooting at the hoop in suspension. The statistics with which he finished his career, his records and his awards are also eloquent. Six rings, six finals MVP, six season MVP, ten times chosen in the best NBA team and nine times in the defensive team, fourteen times All-Star, Rookie of the Year in 1985, Best Defender of the Year in 1988, 
two-time NBA Slam Dunk Contest champion, two Olympic gold medals, fifth highest scorer in NBA history, most consecutive games scoring in double digits, with 842, and best average points in the regular season, playoffs, and finals. During his career, it is estimated that Michael Jordan earned almost $100 million in salaries as a player. However, most of his income came from his agreements with brands such as Nike, with the rights to the Air Jordan sneakers, Coca-Cola, or McDonald's. Michael Jordan's estimated net worth is $1.8 billion. Michael Jordan, named, among other awards, Sportsman of the Year in 1991 and Best Athlete of the 20th Century, was inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame on September 11, 2009. Michael Jordan's legacy in basketball is undeniable. He changed the game and raised the level of competition in the NBA. Jordan was a leader on the court and a role model off the court. In short, there is basketball before Jordan and after Jordan. In the Olympus of the Gods, a maxim was engraved in fire. There was not, there is not, and there will not be, a star as decisive as him. Simply, the best player in history. We want to thank you for watching the complete video, honoring 10 of the greatest basketball players of all time, the legends of basketball who have become a source of inspiration for millions of basketball lovers. We hope you enjoyed the video, and that your favorite player had his respective appearance. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave your like so you don't miss more content. Thank you very much and see you in the next one.